Hi folks, it's Nick here on a cool Monday evening, if indeed this does go up on a Monday evening, we're cramming them in. Now, on this channel, we used to have a section where every two weeks um, we'd do a summary of all the games we reviewed over that time span and rank them in a, some kind of top six order. But now as time's limited and the channel goes into crazy town, we just try and slot them in when we can. And the last time we did one of these re reviews was probably before, well, round about Christmas time over a month. So there's a lot of games to go through, but we will just focus on what personally were my six favourite ones. It's good to look back and recap rather than just have video after video after video and go off in an endless thing. It gives you a chance to talk as well on maybe some of these games that you uh, missed. Before I come to the top six, we have reviewed quite a lot of homebrews, which are on the ZX Spectrum, I should say, which I didn't used to do, but it's good to have a look at those because it's a thriving uh, Spectrum programming market at the moment. There was a lot of Horace games from Steve Broad, a few other ones as well, but my favourite Horace game, I would say, is probably Merry Christmas from Horace by Steve Broad in 2016. Had great fun playing that game over the Christmas period. We have Horace from the original games, you might remember Hungry Horace, Horace Goes Skiing, and Horace and the Spiders. This time he's on the top of a train, collecting presents, jumping backward and forward, going over different levels, and you just keep going till you die. A very well-coded game, a lot of stuff moving on the screen at the same time. Uh, really, really um, worth downloading, get hold of that at Steve Broad's uh, website there. And the other Horace game was a Berserk clone, was Horace and the Robots by another Steve, but not Steve Broad. It was Steve Snake, uh, come out in 2017-18, it was right on the border there. Much, much better than the original ZX Berserk, which came out about 36, 36 years previous, so you'd expect it to be a bit better. Uh, based on the game Berserk from the arcades, of course, round about that sort of time. This time you control Horace against the robots there, going around different mazes, trying to shoot them and avoid them. Um, it's, it seems like a simple game because it is, but it plays brilliantly. You can go in eight directions, the original Berserk on the Spectrum, you can only go in four. So I really like that, seeing Horace again. There's another game, a homebrew game people have been mentioning called uh, Horace's Cousin, which is completely different graphics. I've seen some screenshots, not so sure about it, but it does look quite clever. Might have a look at that at some point. I get quite a lot of messages all over the place uh, asking me to review their games. Well, I haven't really got time to do all of them. Every now and again, we might pluck, pluck the um, odd uh, one. I'm not one into sort of like buying games or advertising games on different sites. I just take them as they as they come. Really, it's not a hard it's not a hard sell. It's nice and gentle. And another weird homebrew worth checking out. Nothing to do with Horace is Super Crap Invaders, published by Mark Woodmass in 2004. This is a really weird curio. Uh, I've got an emulator. Try and get this one. Um, it's a cross between, believe it or not, Space Invaders and Jet Set Willy. Yes, you control Top Hat Jet Set Willy instead of a ship down the bottom. You can jump left and right. You have to avoid an arrow being fired across and shoot the aliens from above. It sounds weird. It plays weird. It is weird. So have a look at that one. We'll try and show you a bit of footage as I'm jibber jabbering about these. A few pinball games again we managed to sneak in. I'm only supposed to be doing one video a week at the moment, but uh, we'll keep going until I collapse and die. Uh, that's the way to go, isn't it? Retro gaming. I'm sure there's a, a song I can sing about that. Um, that might be in the pipeline. Maybe? No, I can't sing. What am I talking about? We're talking about pinball, and I chose... I picked three pinball tables this time. Uh, newly released on the Pinball FX3 on the PlayStation 4 was Adventureland. A lot of people like this one. I think it was a bit cluttered. There's a bit too much going on. Uh, it's a rather lame name, Adventureland. But, you know, as uh, digital tables go, it's quite good. It's just not one of my favourite ones. And the other one, this come packaged with uh, both of these by Zen Studio in 2017. So a two table pack was Son of Zeus, based on Greek mythology. And Son of Zeus, as you all know, he had a lot of sons. But this one is Hercules, and it concentrates on the 12 of his labours, I think. No, he didn't have 12 children. He just had different jobs to do, and they were called labours. Pinball Arcade on the PlayStation 4. Farsight have finally released the last three tables on uh, the PlayStation 4. We're going to go through those. This time we looked at Owl's Garage Band's tour, or world tour. Uh, 2018 he's come out. Next one to look at, uh, which we'll probably do Thursday, is Cactus Jacks, and then Sword of Fury. Sword of Fury looks quite good. Had a brief look at Cactus Jacks. It doesn't look anything special, but we'll soon see when I play that. So anyway, getting back on track, what was the top six uh, that I've picked? There's some Amiga 
ones and some ZX Spectrum ones. You might not agree with these. If you've seen all the videos, by all means, put your comments below what your favourite ones are if you don't agree with the order. Because quite often uh, we have different views, different memories of these things, and that's the whole point of the channel and discussing that. If everyone liked the same stuff, it would be pointless even opening a discussion. There'd be no such uh, programmes on TV like Question Time, because everyone agree. There'd only be one political party, and it'll be King John Un. Anyway, in sixth place, I put Sword of Soden on the Commodore Amiga, uh, published by Discovery Software in 1989. Now the graphics on this are brilliant, the sound on it is brilliant as well, great ambient sounds. Um, from the comment section a few of you had this as your first game, so I don't know if this comes um, bundled with the Commodore Amiga around about that time. Playability is lacking though, sprites are very big, big characters, levels have a sort of like a 3D in effect, sometimes where you've got trees in the foreground, you're moving in the background. Um, but the fighting is very, very limited. It's fire button to slash and hack, jump, stab, just, and in the end of the day, you just keep hitting fire button for all your worth. But it does look darn pretty. If the playability had been a lot better, it might have even got the number one spot, because it does look rather nice. Sword of Soden there. In fifth place on the Commodore Amiga again is a Dalek Attack by Alternative Software in 1992. Already reviewed this one on the ZX Spectrum, so expecting this one to be a bit similar with better graphics. The sound, the music at the start on this Doctor Who music is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's worth trying it out for the music alone. The gameplay is a bit different to the ZX Spectrum version and it's a lot superior in my mind. In the Spectrum version, in the stage one at least, you play as Sylvester McCoy running up and down a sewer, I think. Uh, in the um, Amiga version, still Sylvester McCoy, but you start off in a floating flying thing, and floating flying things are always better than just running around, and you must stop the Daleks from destroying the world, or more accurately, uh, London Town. I'm mean, told later on you get do get to play as Tom Baker, but it's a very, very difficult game, and that's what stops it getting higher up than fifth place. Great Dalek uh, voices on this one. You get to hear Davros as well. Um, a, a good fun game, but by no means a classic. Not many people would have had this, I don't think, unless you're really, really, really into Doctor Who. Fourth place was a homebrew on the ZX Spectrum 128K. It's a game that I first played on my phone, but this is a different version of it by far. It's Angry Birds Opposition, published by Kaz29 in 2016. Not licensed by Rovio, I don't think. The Finnish company do the original Angry Birds in the films, but it's ZX Spectrum and how they get away with it, they, well, they called it Opposition instead. Um, it's slimmed down from the original gameplay of Angry Birds. You just It's like play pigeon shooting, really. Birds go across the screen. You have to do the time right and shoot them. Sometimes you're teleported to different bits of the screen. And birds fly different trajectories, different speeds. So it's all about timing. It's pigs versus birds. How you win is, uh, for each time you miss, some eggs on a conveyor belt go one way. If you hit it, go on the right way. If they go too far left, I believe, then uh, the the birds have won. If you get it right to the right, then you've won, and you get to the next level. Nothing much to it, but coded really well, and the music on this is great. Um, it is the Angry Birds music from the apps I remember, uh, but a chip-based uh, version. So in sixth place, Sword of Soden on the Commodore Amiga, published by Discovery Software in 1989. In fifth place, Dalek Attack by Alternative Software in 92. And in fourth place, a homebrew Angry Birds on the ZX Spectrum 128K, published by Kaz29 in 2016. So let's have a look at the top three games uh, we've been playing in the last uh, month. In third place, some people might have this first, in the ZX Spectrum, it's a music management game or rock band management game. It's Rockstar Ate My Hamster by Codemasters in 1989. Based on a play on words from Freddy Starr, who um, ate someone's hamster, or reportedly did in a newspaper. You must manage a band from one to four players. With your trusty uh, accomplice, Clive, you have £50,000 to actually uh, get your band together, promote them, do gigs, buy merchandise, and record songs as well. Sounds a bit boring, doesn't it? But it's quite good fun. It's got quite a lot of humour in it. A uh, bit of the graphics I did have to censor out because uh, this is a family-based channel. I do tend to um, avoid um, games with swearing in it, but I did have to blip a bit of it out. So if you're going to play this yourself, be be warned. There is a bit of page free girl sort of stuff I had to blank out. The rest isn't too bad. The rest isn't too bad. So it's not the rudest game in the world, but for this channel, I had to do every such bit of censorship. 
In second place, a uh, Jet Set Willy clone, one would say, it's Technician Ted by Houston Consultants in 1984. This is the start of a trilogy. Uh, there's Technician Ted the Megamix, which came out two years later, and then Costa Capers, which I'm sure we'll come to at some point. Not as good as Jet Set Willy, but it's a good effort. You can see it's using a very, very similar engine. I'm sure they haven't um, lifted the original coding. Instead of... Um, collecting keys, you must uh, complete tasks by hitting boxes in the right order. Technician Ted is a hacker who worked in a chip factory, now it's a silicon chip factory, not at my mistake, a fission chip factory. It's a nice cute game, good music playing throughout, it's on the 48k, I do believe the sequel is just on the 128k, so it'll be interesting to see how that one differs. 1984, and steaming along, because I didn't mean this to be super long, um, first place, um, it's on a Commodore Amiga, been a long time since we've had a Commodore Amiga one in first place, but it's Alien Syndrome by Ace in 1988, and based on the popular Sega arcade cabinet uh, from a couple of years before, I believe. It's heavily influenced by the film Aliens, you control either uh, a male trooper or a female trooper, although I do think you can do two players. You must clear the... Um, a starship or base of aliens, rescue the hostages, and then you go on to the next level. It is quite tricky, screaming out to be used with a, a cheat, I think, but I really enjoyed it, although I didn't, didn't get uh, that far. And a, a nice name as well, plays good homage to the alien films. Um, I prefer Alien Breed. Um, on the uh, Commodore Amiga to Alien Syndrome, but it's on a tim similar sort of vein. And out of the games we've reviewed, I probably this is the one I might go back to the most. Uh, Technician Ted might get a bit of looking. I might go to Rockstar, my hamster, every so often. The other ones probably, probably not at all. So in third place on this month or so on the channel is Rockstar Ate My Hamster by Codemasters in 1989. Second place is Technician Ted by Houston Consultants in 1984. And top of the shop this time round is Alien Syndrome by Ace in 1988. Now, thank you for watching the channel. Thank you for watching all these videos. Um, a few people have been telling me they've been binge watching previous videos there, getting into it, fairly people new to the channel. Well, thank you for doing that. I do tend to answer all comments, so even you even comment on a, a video that's years old, the likelihood is I very well my answer. Um, I am dependent in terms of growth, it's very, very tricky, so if you like the channel, um, tell people you know, um, see what they think, if you're on forums, let them know about the channel, and Jenkin, it's nice and friendly, and um, you can express your opinions without fear of being shot down. Even if your opinions are very, very different to mine, that's fine, I like to have a big mix of it, and that's how um, we all learn. Um, you must embrace the light side and the dark side to be fully um, trained with the force, is that right? Maybe not. Anyway, thank you again, thanks for watching, and until next time, take great care of yourself, please subscribe if you haven't already, and um, goodbye. Goodbye.